when we were going to do my first engine, mm -hmm. we bought like five engines, right? Right. And every one of them was cracked. Like, you, you put the magnet on there, and I brought it back from like a swap meet or something. Dude, this one's perfect. Right. You put the magnet on, and brrr, right. this huge zigzag lightning bolt down the side of the block, right? right? Yeah. And one of those on a beautiful 39 Merc block. Right. And then I had ones with cracks in the sleeves. Right. So I had just about everything that you guys are going to see, I bought them all. Yeah. Other than broken into multiple pieces. I've seen flatheads cracked in many different areas where I've never seen a small block Chevy crack, for example. Right. Uh, cracks that run from the pan rail into the bore. Yeah. The pan rail itself from freeze cracks. Right. Uh, the bulkhead crack on yours was the first time I've ever seen that. The cracks in the exhaust, um, they're very common. Mm -hmm. Some of them are not worth fixing. If you've got to chase them too far down, you don't really have good access for drilling and tapping. Right. And even if you put the pin in there, you might not get the pin to seal correctly. Well, most guys aren't going to know what the pin is. So let's just say you got a crack, right? Right. And it's going from the seat to the bore. So you got a you know little lightning bolt line there. So you go in and you drill a hole. Drill it. And then you tap it. Tap it. And you put a pin. They call it a pin. It looks like a kind of like a stud. It's a tapered sort of. screw, basically. Okay. So I figured we better look at some pins since we started talking about them, and they can be kind of you know complicated. So. This is the basic standard pin that's got to taper from the bottom to the top, right? Good, right. bad, what do you think? Uh, it's a good pin. It's an iron type pin. It's pretty standard. Um, the only problem with that pin is if you don't have enough thickness uh, in the area that you're repairing, you will continue to spread the crack. Okay. Uh, I actually prefer the lock and stitch pins. All right. This is an L series pin. It's a straight thread with a tapered top. Mm -hmm. This is actually what wedges into the block and locks it in place. Okay. It's got a small um, cut on the head here, mm -hmm. which breaks off at a predetermined torque. Now, the pin I really prefer is the Lock and Stitch Castmaster pin. It's a C-series pin. Right. This actually has a hooked thread on it. Mm -hmm. Now, it requires a counterbore to make it work. If you can't counterbore it, then you have to use the L-series pin. Okay. So when you're putting these together, let's, let's just say this is our crack right here, and you're going to drill a hole, tap the hole, Correct. and then... Screw it in right. and tighten it up, and the hooks are going to kind of pull it together if you're using the hook pin, right? Right. It's going to break off, and then you're going to need to drill another hole, like kind of almost halfway on top of it, right? It, it will intersect it 20% um, so, about. Okay, so by the time we're done, we're going to have, you know, well, hopefully you're not going to have a lot of them, but you're going to have a few of them like that, knock all the heads off, grind them, and then you got a milling process after that. Right. Okay, we're still talking about cracks in flathead blocks different block now in the Rottler boring bar mm -hmm. and it has a little crack right here one right here same thing on the other bank they're really common on flathead Ford V8s some right. people just leave them in fact in my case the threads look so good we just left them right right uh, this one though the owner opted to seal the leak so what are you gonna do to take care of that uh, I use a time cert insert which is a solid insert mm -hmm. uh, ID OD thread okay similar to hilly coil except the hilly coil is just that it's just wire right uh, so it will still leak Okay. So I choose the time cert because it's a solid piece, mm -hmm. and it actually will block the water from going through. Okay. So when you install the stud, uh, put some sealer on it, it keeps water from coming up out the cylinder head and leaking on the outside of the block. All right. So this guy is the same guy that, uh, perfect block other than those four little cracks. Right. But it was big. It was way, like you said, three inch, 400 or something. Way too big to keep running. Right. So you decided to sleeve it, mm -hmm. and you got a sleeve, basically. You know? Yeah, we went with the flange top sleeve. Now, this isn't the sleeve we're putting in this. Season, no, but, but okay. this is a flange, uh, the top register, we call mm -hmm. it a flange top. Okay. Um, there wasn't enough meat to put a bottom register right. for a straight sleeve. So we went with the flange top sleeve, bored it to 3 inches 440, mm -hmm. uh, machined the registers, and I went ahead and ordered custom sleeves for it. Okay. Uh, uh, what, then the only other thing special to this one is the deck plugs. Right. We put deck plugs in it just mm -hmm. like uh, we did on your engine. Mm -hmm. Um, this one here, we left the holes at 5 sixteenths. Basically the stock gasket hole size. Right. Right, okay. Um, the insert does add some strength to the deck, uh, as well as help the ceiling, mm -hmm. because you have an inch and 5 sixteenths hole from the factory, roughly, right. and the hole in the gasket's only 5 sixteenths. Now, most of you, you know, might think that it's overkill, right? Right. I personally, and obviously this guy too, I don't know how much compression he's going to end up with, but the Balond is almost 12 to 1. So I wanted as rigid a deck as we could get in a flathead, which is why we talked about doing that and actually put the plugs in and all right. that stuff. And then I moved around the water too, but 
Anyways, just to be clear, not everybody needs to do it, but it is good if you're building a really serious motor, especially a lot of guys going blown now. Right. Uh, another thing I wanted to mention is when we install the sleeves, mm -hmm. uh, we will be re-indexing the boards using a bore plate. Okay. Just down here. Right. Uh, you guys are more than welcome to come and shoot that. We can get into engine geometry. Okay, um, yeah. Squaring the boards properly and re-indexing them back to forward centers. Um, Which is basically what this is. This is exactly, the, the plate is exactly Ford's setup. So you're going to match this in the block, right? Correct. The The holes that we've machined here um, were taken from a French block, which we had CMM'd, right. coordinate measuring machine. Right. And all the centers are to a bone stock, never touched French block, right. which are factory Ford centers. Right. And that's where we will be returning the boards to. Perfect. So basically a real blueprinted flathead V8. Correct. All that has absolutely nothing to do with why I'm here, right. which is to pick up my reissued Evans cylinder heads. Right. Jaime owns Precision Engine Development. You guys are the guys that own the rights basically to recast the Evans head and uh, and those are done on the original machines. Original right. tooling, but you can custom dome them anyway, right. you can get any valve relief because in my situation it's a custom piston with a right. special dome and a special reliefs and all that and I just tell you what I want and done, right? Correct. Let's check out my cylinder heads. Let's go. Here's one of your cylinder heads. That's awesome. Let me get the other one.